Covering news where you live, this is 5 News. Well, thank you for joining us here for the latest news and weather where you live. I'm Joe Ellison. Well, this morning we have new details about seven people that were found dead at a property in rural Oklahoma. This investigation unfolding in Henrietta, which is roughly 50 miles south of Tulsa. It all started out as an Amber Alert. Two teenage girls, 14 year old Ivy Webster and 16 year old Brittany Brewer were reported missing earlier on Monday. They were last seen with Jesse McFadden, a registered sex offender who was supposed to stand trial that day. Authorities said while searching a rural Oklahoma property for the two missing teens, they discovered the bodies of seven people, including the suspected remains of the teens and Jesse McFadden. The father of Brittany Brewer says the 16 year old was the light of his life. Right now, he says he has so many questions about how this all happened. She was a very bright and beautiful young girl. She always played with her little sister and, and, uh, and I don't know how I'm going to tell her because she's like Brittany's law, Brittany's missing, Brittany's missing. And I got to tell a four year old that she's gone and I don't even know how to do that. Well, at this point, the four other people have not been identified. Of course, we will continue to, to follow this developing story and bring you updates on five news shows online as well at fivenewsonline.com. All right, before we get to other news, let's get a check of the weather with meteorologist Zach Scott. Zach, it looks like we have some sunshine in the forecast. Yeah, we've had a lot of it the last couple of days, haven't we? We got more of it for your Tuesday, plenty of it for your Wednesday. And then as we go late week, we're going to get more moisture in the lower mid levels of the atmosphere more warmer air coming in and that'll be rising giving rise to cumulus clouds. I think we're going to have scattered cumulus clouds late weekend of the weekend. Still plenty of warm sunshine mixing in, but it's all blue skies for your Tuesday. As I mentioned, we're going from the mid 60s the last few days to upper 60s. This is uh, around 70 degrees northwest Arkansas and then widespread low to mid 70s for the River Valley looking good. We've had that cool north wind last couple of days uh, anywhere from 10 to 20 gusting 20 to 30 miles per hour. Still there, but it's lighter. Winds are overall 5 to 15 miles per hour out of the northwest. Still a little bit of a cool breeze. Plenty of sunshine, though. It's going to feel really nice today. Gusts 15 to 20 miles per hour late morning through the afternoon. The winds will start to dive off and uh, die off as we go through the evening hours. Mostly 40s going into tomorrow morning. A few 30s will be possible, and then warmer weather really builds in. A high pressure across the Gulf of Mexico. Again, we're just going to be looking at warmer, muggier air coming in from the south and the southwest, leading to a big warm up. We'll have 70s to 80s across five countries going Thursday, 80s to 90s Friday, Saturday, and then into Sunday. Another warm day. We're going to be close, Joe, to some record heat building in by Saturday, at least for northwest Arkansas. I think you have the better shot to break that record. River Valley? Getting close. We'll have more on those details coming up. All right. Thanks so much, Zach. Now we are learning details, more of them in the child support trial here in Arkansas involving Hunter Biden. Biden will now have to answer more questions about his finances in the case. The president's son appeared in court Monday in Batesville. The case involves child support payments from Biden to London Roberts, the mother of their four year old daughter. Roberts and her lawyers want many of the same financial records House Republicans are trying to get for their own investigations. The judge ordered Hunter Biden's lawyers to provide written answers by May 12th, and his deposition will take place in mid-June. If the parties don't reach an agreement to adjust the monthly payments, a trial is scheduled for late July. And Governor Sarah Huckabee Sanders is now naming a new commissioner to the Arkansas Division of Higher Education. Dr. Ken Warden from the University of Arkansas Fort Smith was picked by Governor Sanders. Warden has worked at UAFS and Arkansas Tech Ozark for a combined 26 years. In a statement, he says he'll work to expand access to quality education from grade school to higher education. And Fayetteville police opened the doors to their new headquarters. You can already see a big difference from the old location. Officers tell us the designs are based off the Walton's Art Center and Theater Square. It's located just off I-49 and the sidewalk shares the bike trails. That's just one of many new things for their headquarters. The building is gated and has many security measures in place. And inside, there's an indoor shooting range, a workout room with expanded space for training and meetings. It's all beneficial as officers say their facility has tripled in size from the old location, which originally served as 25,000 square foot JCPenney's department store. We spent a lot of uh, money sending officers to training, that whether it be locally or out of state. And since we have this big training area that we can utilize, hopefully we can uh, get some uh, 
training opportunities here. Well, this new facility won't only be for Fayetteville Police Training. The public also invited to participate in their Citizens Police Academy. Classes have not been scheduled just yet, but when they are, you'll find them on the Police Department's website. And early voting begins today in Springdale's special election. There are six issues on the ballot. The city plans to use its existing two-cent sales tax to fund the projects. Mayor Sprouse says those include road and street improvements, a new senior center, a new fire station, and improvements to the city's park. Early voting is underway, and Election Day is one week from today. Well, today also marks the first day of early voting in several special elections, with Election Day set for the next week, as we mentioned. One of the issues on the ballot will affect those near Beaver Lake. Thousands of fire department customers there could soon be paying more for fire department services. 5 News reporter Micah Wilson explains. Hey, good morning to you. The Beaver Lake Fire Department could be getting new funding, but only if voters approve an annual change in fees. And early voting for that special election starts today. The fact of it is, you know, we need more personnel. We need new equipment, you know, that's more uh, adequate for our staffing. Dusty Qualls took over as fire chief about 45 days ago. He works at the Beaver Lake Fire Department part time in addition to working at the Rogers Fire Department. <laughs> because we have a very limited crew right now during the day and most of the time nobody at night. In December, the department had to cut four of its 10 full-time firefighters and EMTs in addition to the former chief's pay by 7.5%. Now the department is down to four full-time staff and three part-time, including the chief. We, we need the resources. We need the funding to get those resources to be staffed adequately. Funding for this will come from a $50 increase in membership dues this would be the first increase since 2017. Which is, you know, a little four dollars a month. If approved, this increase would give the department $121,000 in additional funding. If this ends up not being passed, do you all have a plan B? Our plan B is if it does not pass, and it really boils down to what do the members of our community want. Larry Smith is the board chairman of the department. He says impact response times are also on the line. Right now, there's only one firefighter per shift. But there's not much a single firefighter can do, you just except get the truck there. So he says it's essential the department gets more staff to better cover the area, especially with more people in the area during the summertime. Fire departments are like insurance companies. Uh, for the most part, you don't need them. But when you need them, you really need them. And the department says if the due increase is approved, it would hire two more part-time firefighters and focus on equipment upgrades. Micah Wilson, 5 News. All right, thank you, Micah. Those are some of your top stories on this Tuesday. Make sure to catch up with us again tomorrow right here for more. I'm Joe Ellison. Have a great day.